Slavers ring, are you listening? In the lane, snow's glistening. A beautiful sight, we're happy tonight. Walking in a winter wonderland. Christmas 2020. It's been kind of weird. And I know that it hit us all differently. And that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead. Man. Okay. Wow, you put a lot of tape on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like a box on a box on a box on a box. Let's uh, Christmas 2020. It's been a weird year. And it's been a weird Christmas. I know for me it didn't really feel like Christmas until the week of. And there's normally that build up in November. It's just, it's such a fond time of year for a lot of people. And it's also a very sad time of year for many people. And this year was definitely a blend of the two. What we all experienced this year, I believe, is a good thing. To give us some perspective on what we've had for Christmas and, and what we haven't had. And what we want to strive for in the years to come. Christmas for me has always been about connectivity and collectivity. To take the opportunity and the chances to see the people we don't always get the opportunities to see. Christmas Eve, I have always gone to my buddy Liam's house before we go and see my dad's family. We'll invite friends over and do dinner parties for people that lead completely separate lives and we don't always get the opportunity to sit down, but that's our time to catch up and, and see each other. Things have been different this year, but nonetheless, I think we've been given the opportunity to learn a lot from this. I feel like Christmas became such a wonderful thing to experience. We would invite our neighbors over and we would invite friends who maybe didn't have family in town or invite friends who had just moved here from another country and they had nobody but themselves. To be able to bring together people on Christmas and, and give them a place to be and give them love and, and give them what everybody wants to feel like Christmas is a very warm, caring thing to do. Now this year we didn't have the option to do that. We had to be by ourselves. We had to be with the family or the friends or the roommates that we were quarantining with. In some cases that might have been the best thing possible. I know in mine it was definitely a learning experience. To go through what is normally such a social time of year with just the three of us, my dad, my mom, and I, it was really something that put all of this into perspective for me. It made me realize how much I wanted to reach out to my friends. It made me realize how much I needed to reach out to people and show them that I love them and show them that I'm thinking of them because that's what this time of year is about. And that's what we should be doing on a daily basis. But Christmas has a way of bringing that out of us and showing us what community is. And if you haven't had the opportunity to reach out to somebody and check in on them and see how they're doing, maybe give it a go. I know I miss my friends. I know I miss my family. I, I miss music, I miss performing. And I'm, I'm very privileged to, to be able to still do what I do, but I miss sharing it face to face. I miss the conversations face to face. To summarize Christmas this year, <laughs> I would say it's different. It's not better, it's not worse. It was just different. It felt lonely, it may have felt obscure and abstract, but to step back 
let this alter how we proceed with the rest of our Christmases to come. Next year, let's bring in the people we love. Let's tell them we love them. Let's, let's hug our friends when we can. <laughs> but yeah, I just, I wanted to say I miss you to my friends, my family, my fans, to the people out there who are listening. And I wanted to wish you all Merry Christmas. I know it's a week late, <laughs> but I hope you guys are hanging in there. Stay strong. 2020 is almost over. But let's be there for each other. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go to bed. See you guys soon.